Hey, it's Mr. Anderson, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of the cellular respiration video, uh, or, or lab in this video. Um, so step one, obtain three vials with steel washers on the bottom. So that's what these things are. I'm next going to put those to the side. Um, to save you a little bit of time, I also have three little bits of paper towel, and we'll use those in just a second. So I've just kind of ripped those out. Okay, so next we're going to fill a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with approximately 50 mils of water. So I'm going to fill up... 50 mils of water in here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 15 germinating peas. The germinating peas will be in a beaker and they're going to be swollen uh, because they've been sitting in there overnight. Um, so I'm going to put 15 of those in the graduated cylinder and measure the volume of that. So, drop one. Okay. So it started at 50 mils, and now it's at 7 mils. And so you may want to write this down, uh, or you could just remember it. So I roughly have 7 milliliters of, uh, seven milliliters of germinating peas. Those are going to be the biggest things, so you want to make sure that you always have 7 milliliters of each of everything. So I'm going to dump the water back out, and then I'm going to put those 15 grad germinating peas on one of my paper towels. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the same amount of glass beads. And so I'm going to pour, pour in 50 mils again. And now I'm going to pour in glass beads until I have 7 mils of that as well. There we go. So now i got 7 milliliters of glass beads. So let me dump the water out. And those go on one of my paper towels. And then the last thing I want is non-germinating peas. And so I'm going to do that same thing again. I'm going to get 50 mils of water. Now I'm going to get the non-germinating peas. Those are going to be much smaller. So now I'm going to add 15 of those. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so uh, that's only brought my volume up to about 3 milliliters. And since I have to have 7 milliliters in everything, I'm going to add glass beads until we bring that total up to 7. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to dump that out. I'm going to put this on the last paper towel over here. So I've got, oh, I dropped one. So again, on my paper towels, I've got uh, 15 germinating peas, 15 glass beads of the same volume, and then 15 of the non germinating and glass beads, so the volume stays the same. So now I can take that graduated cylinder and the germinating peas and the glass beads and get that out of my way. Next thing I have to do is actually make my respirometer. And so to make a respirometer, I've got these three vials. I'm going to add um, one of the, going to grab one of these cotton balls. This is absorbent, soft and absorbent. And so what you do is you take one of these cotton balls and so we want to make sure we have about the same volume in each. I'm going to rip that into three equal little bits of cotton. There we go. And I'm just going to stuff that down into the bottom of the respirometer. Now the pipette you can use to push stuff down. Okay, so now we've got absorbent, cotton on the bottom. Absorbent means it soaks up liquid. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some potassium hydroxide in the bottom. Potassium hydroxide, remember, grabs onto the carbon dioxide and turns it into a solid. This stuff is really, really nasty, so you want to be really careful. It's a poison. Make sure that you're not getting it in your eyes. Make sure you're not getting it in your hands. So I'm going to take in 500 microliters, and I'm going to put it in the absorbent cotton in the bottom. And seal that back up. Okay, 
Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the, the, the P's aren't actually affected by that. So on top of it, we're going to put non-absorbent cotton. It comes in the other bag. It's made out of polyester. So I'm going to take about an equal amount, and I'm going to put that on top of the absorbent. And we're going to have about the same amount of each. And then I'm going to push this down to the bottom. So now that liquid can't actually get up. That potassium hydroxide can't get up to where the peas are. Okay, next thing I want to do is actually fill them up. And so one of them, I'm going to put germinating peas. So there's 15 germinating peas in this one. I'm going to put the pipette on the top, and I'm going to seal it so that we don't push it too hard. You could break the glass, but I want to make sure that there's a tight seal. Grab a couple more. Next one, I'm going to put just glass beads in. Now the reason we put glass beads in is that there may be changes just to, to temperature changes. And we know that glass beads don't respire. And so if there are any changes in the glass beads, we can use that as a correction. Again, I'm going to put a seal in that. And then in the last one, we're going to put non-germinating peas. And then the beads, so that we make sure that we have the same exact volume in each of those. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to seal that one up. This you can see that that one went down a little bit farther, so I'm going to get a different pipette. I want to make sure that all the pipettes match. There we go. So we have roughly the same volume on top of each of those. Okay, next thing we're actually going to measure respiration. So to do that, we're going to get one of these big tubs and we're going to fill it up with uh, water, water that's at room temperature. So you're going to fill it up with water that's room temperature. Once you have that water in there, we don't want to touch it. We don't want to put our hands in there. We just want to let it sit so that the temperature stays exactly the same throughout the experiment. Next thing is really important. It's called the equilibration period. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your three respirometers, you're going to put them underwater, but you're going to have it so that the end, like this, is actually going to come out. So they're going to be underwater, um, the respirometers, and then we're going to have the pipettes come out the side. And we want to let it sit there for about 10 minutes so it can actually equilibrate to the temperature. So we want the temperature inside the respirometers to be the same as the temperature in the water. So after it's done that, we will then take our respirometers and we'll put them flat down in the water. Um, sometimes you'll have to put something on top of them to hold it there. So you can use a beaker. You could actually use a beaker, take some water, and, and put it on top of them to make sure that they stay down. You then just let it sit there until you can actually see measurements inside the pipette. Once you can see measurements inside the pipette, then you're ready to go. So you're just going to start your watch and uh, record the initial amount in each of the pipettes, remembering which one is germinating glass beads and germinating and uh, non-germinating in glass beads. You'll then record it at time zero, and then you're going to record it at 5, 10, 15, and 20 minutes. Um, you can then use the glass beads to correct for changes uh, just to in, due to environment. But what we should see is uh, changes. In other words, as the uh, organisms that happen to be doing respiration are, are consuming oxygen, they're producing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is grabbed by the potassium hydroxide, so it's eliminated. And so we should see the water start to flow in the pipette so we can measure the respirometer. The only trick to that is actually measuring the pipettes, the, the delineations on the pipettes are really, really small. Just to wrap your head around it, this would be right here from zero to one is one milliliter. And so we're actually measuring hundredths of milliliters. So it's going to be very, very small. You may want to take a look at the pipettes before you actually put them underwater because once it's underwater, it's kind of hard to measure it. So that's uh, Cellular Respiration Lab, and I hope that's helpful.